Just like always, spot on as we thought the uh, Wisconsin Badgers would get thumped on Saturday. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. Baton Rouge. That was pretty fun up there at Lambeau. It was. Uh, it looked like fun. I've got a I've got a good hot topic question for you that maybe, I don't know if all right anybody is. Well, I got a confession to make. Even oh, though I was no. on the clock, I did watch the game here oh, at work. Boy. So you know, I, there were some hours that were. I'll make sure you get half paid. Okay, for those all right, hours. good. And, and but no remote was thrown, so that was a plus. So that's and, actually pretty impressive. What a great that. what a great Saturday! Holy cow! What a great weekend of college football, and now we get look forward to the NFL. So. Good times, fun times. It's, it's busy, so we won't spend too much no, time on this uh-uh, intro. We'll no, just get into let's it. Let's get right to the point. The uh, extra this point. week's episode of Extra Points. It's you right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Extra Points. John Barry to my left. I'm Eric Schmoltz. We're back with our weekly Extra Points show where we talk all things local state sports. And it leads me to my. Uh, Hang on, hang on. All right here. Oh, there we go. I didn't even notice. Didn't Under Armour Badgers. I didn't, I didn't realize they sold things in gray. Well, they do. Under Armour. I'm all for it. They're one and zero as the Under Armour. Under Armour. I should have uh, worn my new sponsor. sunglasses. You should have. Yeah, bought over the weekend. See, there you go. Eight dollar pair of sunglasses. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, my hot button question. Uh, a lot of people talking about where the Badgers will be ranked, and I think they were 15th in the AP poll. Coaches were 16th. Yep. Uh, probably maybe it's about right. I don't know. Polls don't really matter at this time of the year anyway, except, you know, that they weren't even ranked. And no. they, uh, you, you know, if you were ranking based on best performances of week one, they should probably be a top ten team. They should be, but they're not going to be. But I, I get that. But it was fun to watch college game day live from Lambeau where you were at. And uh, Corso and Herb Street and the gang, and, and, you know, they all picked LSU, which I'm not surprised. And then Mr. Rogers came on board and uh, gave the proverbial W and said, you know, the last five times the SEC has beaten the Big Ten head-to-head, he said, but you know what, streaks are made to be broken. And sure Mr. Enough. Rogers was right. So 16-14, uh, to 14, and I think what I got to talking with uh, specifically with somebody who goes to a lot of these huge games is, you know, where does this rank in terms of just like best games that they had attended or right. best games that the Badgers have had. And I mean... I haven't been to all these Rose Bowls, and I think maybe you toss out the Rose Bowls and the Final Fours. Maybe right. say like regular season at least. Any sport for Wisconsin, where does, you know is this was that the greatest? It's game up there. Ever? I would say the the time Ohio State came in as number one in football, and the Badgers beat them. That's what we um, said too. Two thousand three. Two thousand three. Schumer to Evans. That was yards. that was pretty sweet, but certainly it, it's in the top five, and, and and even with some basketball games that have been. You know, um, pretty incredible. This one, just because of the magnitude and what it what was it about, and and really the fact that it kind of kicked off the, the college season, so everybody was watching. Right. And was that Lambo? At Lambo, and there. you and I both thought, please don't lay an egg. Just please don't get blown out. And boy, it was far from that. I thought they won 16-14, and and they could have easily have won by more than that. Uh, the defense was was great, and I think the two things I'm going to take from that game is number one, that defense is going to keep them in games. And yeah. I'm not saying it's going to help them win more games, but it's going to keep them in games, and the offense is going to get better. And I think you take those two things, and and maybe uh, you know maybe that eight and four, nine and three season is not such a pipe dream. Yeah, I was thinking eight and four as I yeah. thought, thought about it tonight yep. today. Just based on you know it's one game so far, yep. they still have to go through that crazy schedule they we do. talked about last week. But that's that's a game where we didn't think they were going to win. Mm-hmm. So now there's one more on the docket. Yep. Uh, yeah, the defense was awesome, even though Chris Orr was gone after one play, and now he's gone for the season. Uh, but they hope to get Edwards back, which yeah. is kind of, you know, is kind of, you know, tit for tat, so to speak. You get one back, and you lose the other one. And, and really, the offense moved the ball fairly well. You know, they had the interception in the end zone. I wasn't, obviously, all that impressed by Houston's decision-making, necessarily, at times, but... They moved the ball fairly well on a team that they did. many and, thought would have a pretty good and defense. And I think, you know, you, you got to see a little bit of, of why Vince Beagle's going to play on Sunday afternoon. So I don't think there's any question about that. He is he is legit. He reminds me so much of Chris Borland. He's just so – he's a playmaker. He's around the ball, and he just gets that defense fired up. And, you know, I mean, uh, linebacker-wise, they played great. The Derek defense Watt was, was phenomenal. Yeah. Connelly, Cici, went, Connelly, Cici I think, was came great. in Connelly came in as a walk-on, walk-on kid that just played his tail off. The secondary, kind of the bend, don't break, gave up a couple of little big plays, a couple of big plays, and really Fournette – for as good as he is, and as you know, he's as good as advertised. Those were the quietest 138 yards right. I think you'll ever see in the history of college football. Because other than two plays, he didn't hurt us. Yeah, and maybe there were even a couple more where there were right. 
most of his yards came on probably like five plays. They did, uh, yep. A lot of it was four yards here and there. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with LSU. You know, I, we're talking the other day now. You got to root for LSU the rest you of the do. way. You do. You want them to do well because that helps our, our RPI and, and everything else. And, uh, you know, I mean, and they probably will. They'll rebound. They just... They did not get good quarterback play, I didn't think. I thought their quarterback was really – that last pass he threw was, was terrible. I mean, that wasn't to anybody. And say what you want about the cheap shot. The guy got a one-game suspension. I've heard he should have got a year. I heard he should have bought – he should have got more. My only thing is, how are you penalizing him by keeping him out of Jacksonville State? Right. I would have kept him out of the first SEC game if you really want to punish him. Well, He's, he was going to miss the first half of the next game anyway because right. he got ejected. Right. So, so I mean, uh, you know, that's LSU's decision, and the NCAA probably could have stepped in. But uh, a cheap shot, no doubt about it. But, you know, frustration what it was. And Dixon said, hey, I've been hit harder, and I'm not sure he has been. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the way it is is we're 1-0, and and uh, – Akron and Georgia Southern coming up next before we embark on a, a brutal Big Ten schedule with Michigan State and Michigan back to back. Right. On the I guess road. just make sure you don't overlook it. Right, exactly. Just take year. care of business with Akron, take care of business with Georgia Southern and Georgia State. Or Georgia it is. State and get Whatever ready. It is. Whoever. Yeah, get ready for, for Michigan State, which, you know, let's face it, if they can go one and one in Michigan, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, got to get there first. Got to get there first. Make sure yep. you get it done. Uh, Shout out to the Warhawks. They opened their season yep. with a big win, just as we thought. They mm -hmm. get uh, another one this week uh, at home. Bellhaven miss. Always at home here in the early mm -hmm. portion of the season, so that's good for them. Uh, let's, I guess, move on to the high school okay. slate here real quick. Just kind of get you caught up. Um, you know, t uh, 45 to 6 was the score of choice here in, in Janesville was. last week. Mm -hmm. Parker won 45 to 6. Craig lost 45 to 6. And now they're both 1 and 2 heading into games against teams that look like they're uh, probably in, in, in the top two or three teams in the Big Eight. So right. it's going to be a tough week for It's Janesville going to be a teams. tough week. And, you know, 1 and 3 could be staring at both of them. But uh, you never know. I mean, I think when you look back to last week, I got a chance to see Parker play. And again, um, no disrespect to East, but just a very porous defense that is not capable of stopping probably in, even an inner squad game with stopping them. Um, they just, Parker kind of did what they wanted. Uh, Coach Krieger was able to empty his bench, get everybody on the field. Seamus Murphy with a great late game run to, to get his name on the in the scorebook. And then I think for the Cougars, you got a chance to see him play. I talked to Ben McCormick at length, and he said, you know, really defensively, I was proud of our effort. We only gave up two drives that really were sustained. He said the rest of them were just mistakes that we made and turnovers and, and, turnovers and, and special teams errors right. and and he he knows this week with Middleton coming in you know he said the Cougars are banged up uh, especially on the offensive line where they don't have a lot of depth to begin with so I mean you may see a little bit of cat and mouse with Craig this week and just try to you know control clock as much as possible and you know get ready for the big showdown with Parker because Craig's season really starts next week against Parker I mean this week obviously it's a it's a big game but Ben knows that it's it's a tall task against Middleton and if Craig's one and three, they basically have played the two best teams, being Sun Prairie and 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 Middleton. He feels like, and and that leaves five games where you you know you think you got a chance to maybe win four of them and, and make yourself playoff eligible. And you have to, and yeah. really probably looking at one and three versus one and three next week. Probably, yep. Uh, we'll see if one of these teams can pull off an upset. Right. Uh, in the Rock Valley. What's going on in the Rock? What could you explain that to me? It's East pretty Troy? awesome. Uh, East Troy's three and zero. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the only three and zero team, and we. That's I mean, crazy. And they go to Clinton this week, and if Clinton can win that, then there's just going to be a complete oh, log jam. Utter the chaos. <laughs> Evansville, Albany, and and everybody else. Jefferson. It just, you know, just when you think you kind of got things figured out, Broadhead Judah goes on the road. I talked to Jim Matthias. He said, you know. Two weeks ago, when they lost at home badly to Clinton, he said we we were still hung over from the Lightning game. He said we were still hung over from. Going back to Bigfoot on a Saturday, having a lead, losing it. He said our kids kind of slept on that and didn't really put it out of their heads. And he said we came out last week, we protected Matt Schmidt, which is, which is what you got to do with an all-conference quarterback. And he made plays. And he said uh, that was the broadhead Judah that we thought we'd see all year. And and like I say, they get another chance this week with, with uh, Turner coming in, which is coming off a tough loss to Evansville Albany. So again, the Rock Valley I think is about to get even more mixed up than it already is. That's fun though. It's yeah, it is. The it's whole, great. I mean, yeah, uh, you like when things come down to the, the final couple yep. of weeks of and the season. And there's parity. That's I what I like. I don't think there's any no nope. doubt it's going to come down. And I, I, you and I both agree. I think Evansville Albany is still the best team, but uh, it's nice to see that parity and to know that six, seven, eight teams are all capable of at least 
at least making a playoff run. Well, and I like Clinton's spot here because if I they beat East Troy, now all of a sudden everybody basically is three and one. Three and one, top. yeah. And they would already have faced East Troy, Evans and Albany, Albany, Bigfoot, and brought a Judah. Right. That's, I mean, they, yep. they would have run, if you can run that gauntlet. That's three kind and of one, murderer's row, yeah. Yeah, that, that's going to. And know. no disrespect to, to Whitewater and, and Edgerton and, and McFarland and those teams because they're certainly capable of playing with teams, but. Right now it's been the haves and the haves. It has. And, uh, you know, I think even if you look at the Edgerton team that's 0 3. You know, two of those three losses came down to one possession game. So, I mean, it's uh, other than Whitewater, which obviously is bad, battling a numbers problem and, and battling some youth, uh, I think most of the games here on out are going to be pretty competitive. Shout out to Mike Gregory because I saw him for a brief moment at Lambeau after the game. He's a good egg. I just caught him on Mike's the Mike's one of my favorites. He's a good egg, yes. <laughs> Yep. Uh, in the Southern Lakes, uh, the Cardiac Comets oh, rack boy. at it again. They, mm. uh, remember, if you remember, la end of last year, they had the crazy comeback against Wilmot. Now, uh, on Friday, they were down 34-12 to against Oof. Elkhorn. Come back and win it 35-34. Pretty, pretty amazing. That is it too early to name Jake Benzing our player of the year, or we got to wait? I think a third of the way is a little too we gotta early. we got to wait? All right, but no, certainly, that kid is a dynamite. We've been talking about him all year. He just makes things happen, and and uh, a kid that doesn't need a lot of room to operate, he just thinks when he has the ball in his hands, you know that they're a threat to score. And, you know, unfortunately for Elkhorn, I think, you know, Coach Lee probably thought our defense is a little better than that and had a little late late collapse and it obviously cost him a game. But, you know, you look at it, Waterford got beat. That was a team that I think most people thought would 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 be the favorite there. Badger found a way to win. They're 3-0. and You know, Delavan at Union Grove this week's a big game. You got 2-1 uh, and one Delavan at or actually 1-0 and in the conference, so and Union Grove hasn't lost yet. So... The Lakes is another conference that I think it's going to be five, six weeks before we really know what's going on there. Yeah. Start. We start, at least we got that started. So we now did. we can yep. sort of exactly. see, uh, yep. see what goes down. And you had a shout out to Mike weeks. Gregory. I'd like to give a shout out to the Parkview Vikings for, oh, there you, go. Uh, you know, uh, the first win in, in the Trailways uh, large and um, a great win for them because you just never know. It's the unknown. And, and you know, they went in there with a team that was 2-0 and coming in, and really Parkview handled them well and, and played well. So hats off to them. And they get their uh, their conference home opener this week against Montello. Uh, and then there's like six other schools that I think are part of that co-op. <laughs> that's but that's three. But it's yeah, three. Yeah. Green Lake. I think yeah, something there. like that. But, you know, great for them because this is what it's about. It was getting the opportunity to play teams of your own size and, and Parkview came through with a big win, so I think they have a decent chance I to start two and zero. I, I think, and, and I hope so because that's what they deserve. Because they were the, you know, uh, so-called sisters of the poor for so many years because of their enrollment, and they're not there anymore. So a chance for them to, to you know, get some interest and some longevity maybe back into that program, and it, it's been, you know, dwindling a little bit. Maybe if you start two and zero, you're. I mean, yeah, you're in the driver's seat you to are. make the playoffs, and, uh, and that's something like that Parkview say, hasn't, hasn't, hasn't done. done so. I think they've only done it one time, actually. Like I say, hats off to them, and I hope they keep it up. Shall we move to the NFL? We finally? shall, yes. Finally, the NFL season is here after dun, 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 dun. five weeks of meaningless preseason, pre -season games. Preseason games where Teddy Bridgewater blew up his knee without anyone near him. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's fun. I mean, you and I both do fantasy football, and it was fun to get those drafts out of the way. and. You just look forward to the season, and um, you know, for Packer fans, a lot to look forward to. You know, for me as a Dolphin fan, eh, probably not so much. But I mean, I know for you guys and for Packer fans, and not you especially, but um, you know, it, it's a fun time in Wisconsin. You know, you take the Wisconsin win and the start of the Packer season and their expectations, and uh, it, it's a fun time of year. And uh, I, I look at the NFL, and I look at, you know, we talked about making predictions. I'm I'm not sure in the AFC. Uh, yeah, I, I was just I trying think, to go through teams in my I head. I think Brady-less Patriots is going to be a struggle. Um, you know, the NFC, I like Seattle. I like Seattle to, to get there, and uh, that doesn't mean Carolina or Arizona or Green Bay, for that matter, can't do it. But I like I like Seattle uh, with a, maybe a healthy Jimmy Graham and, and with Ru what Russell Wilson's done. Uh, I'm going to go with the Seahawks to come out of the NFC. Wow. All right. I'm going to take the Saints. The Saints. I uh, just think Breeze has one more run kind of left in him. Maybe this is it. Uh, he's got some playmakers around him to be sure. And 
Uh, give, give me some, give me some New Orleans. Did you, did you get the Zika virus in Green Bay last weekend, or what happened? The Saints. Wow. I'm going on a limb. All right, the Saints. Okay, and then. Um, you know, I mean, why would I start trying to be right? I mean, at least be bold. Well, it is being bold. That's very <laughs> bold because um, they were terrible last year. Uh, AFC, you can go first because um, I don't know yet. But well, I don't think. I, you, you know. Each, like you said, every team has their what in the world's going to happen. You know, the Broncos are the team they just won, and they don't even have a quarterback, quarterback who's never had a snap. No. Uh, you got the Steelers, who I think are always in it, and they've got Le Le'Veon Bell out for the first few mm -hmm. weeks. I, I kind of like them, but I'm going to take the Patriots. All right. Know, you, you know, I think they survived those first four weeks without Brady, and, uh, you know, he and Bill Belichick have been known at times to yeah. have a chip on their shoulder yeah, with these have. things. So maybe if, uh, they, if they, you know, they go two and two those first four weeks, they'll be in good shape. Right. Brady coming back and Gronk and and that defense um, probably would have been a safe pick for me as well. But I'm going to go out on a limb and 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 go with the Bengals. I'm going to say the Bengals, what? Andy Dalton. Oh, I know. That's, I know. that's, that's a worse, worse win than the Saints. The Saints. At well, least Breeze has won at I gotta, times in the playoffs. i got to look at everything else, though. I mean, Pittsburgh, like you said, they've got some you know, they got some deficiencies. And I don't like the Bills. I don't like the Jets. Uh, then you go in the West with Oakland, no. San Diego, no. Um, Kansas City, no. Can't buy them. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll go with the Bengals. So i got the Bengals. I got... I'll tell you what, I'll have Seattle beating Seattle Cincinnati, over Cincinnati in the Super Bowl, and you've got... I'll take the Patriots over the Saints. All right. Folks, if either one of those come true, <laughs> then uh, I will... Man, I'll do cartwheels. Folks aren't, folks aren't going to appreciate that neither of us have the Packers in there, but no. I would think no. we're both uh, in agreement that they easily win the NFC North. At this easily point. win that NFC North, and uh, I think, I, to be honest with you, I think the downfall for the Packers... Is they've got to stay healthy, right? And it starts with number twelve, and and oh, we'll, and Jordy, and Jordy, and we'll see what kind of year Eddie has as a bounce back year. But uh, they've got some question marks, uh, you know, on the, on the defensive side, and certainly, you know, this whole Josh Sitton thing is taken on a story on its own because uh, you know, and now he signs the Bears, and you know, the Packer locker room was very, you know, I think very shaken up by that because he was a leader on that team and a guy that was there for eight years, and now all of a sudden. Not only is he gone, but he's playing with your rival. And, uh, you know, we'll see if there's any fallback on that. But, uh, yeah, I like Green Bay. And if Green Bay does get the Super Bowl, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. I'm, not at all. That would probably be the, they got the easiest road. That would be road. the safer pick than they the They have the easiest probably. road not only schedule-wise, but division-wise. What? You can go with Green <laughs> Bay. Yeah, that's fine. No, I'll stick with it. No. I need to go out on some limbs. And I can't because if I do and they don't make it, then I'll, too many people would come after me because anytime you pick the Packers, they lose. So not picking Green Bay, not doing it, nope. They will be very surprised. They will be not. very surprised, yes. Uh, any, is there any surprise? You got any, like, any other shockers? Um, you know, not really. I, I, I just think it's... I think Andrew Locke comes back and has a I, big year. I think you could be right if their offensive line comes back. And I think, uh, you know... Um, Antonio Brown might he might have two thousand yards receiving. Any guy's a freak, and I just think they're going to throw to him a lot. Jaguars, my sleeper team. Blake Bortles, yep, I like them. And I think uh, a team to keep an eye on is Houston. I think with Lamar Miller, um, Jadavian Clowney is healthy. JJ Watt's going to he he's, he's, he's going he's he's to be active and start the yeah. season. Um, so I think the Texans, if again comes down to quarterback play, but uh, Lamar Miller I think was a big pickup for them because in that offense. Uh, he'll be a grinder. Again, take all these predictions and yeah. don't take them to Vegas. No, don't. Take them, no, just not at all. crumple no. up on a piece of paper no. and put it in a filing cabinet, and, and then we can tell you to pull it out if, if the we Bears actually. Bears win six somehow. games. Uh, I'll say uh, no. No, I say no. Five and five, eleven. Five yeah. and eleven for the Bears. Sorry, Bear fans. But it's so hard to th think about it because the rest of the NFC North is just such a so bad. I mean, and now yeah. the Bridgewater's out and the, yeah. and the Megatron's gone. The Bears gone. could win three games in their own division, right? And they don't even have to win two more. But I think it could be a long year for the for the Bears. But John Fox in the second year, wherever he's been, has always had success. So maybe that'll play on the side of the Bears. Uh, what about like Ezekiel and the Cowboys? Uh, he's gonna have to be a workhorse because I don't think Dak Prescott. You know, you can rave about how he did in the preseason, but let's face it, it's preseason. It doesn't mean anything. So. Uh, it's a tall task for him. Um, he's got weapons with Des Bryant and certainly with Elliott, but uh, Broncos win their division. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Kansas City does. I just think with that Osweiler, it's just I don't buy it. I just think 
you know, uh, their defense is going to be good, obviously, but I just, I like Kansas City. What about your Dolphins? Eight and eight, seven and nine, Playoffs? same old thing. No. Ten and a half? No. Done? No. Nah, I think he will be. I don't think they'll resign him just because he hasn't shown anything yet, and Dominican Sue is plays hard for one play and takes four off. So, I mean, and, and Gacy, you know, maybe he can, you know, reinvent the wheel. I don't know, but right now, I'm not I'm not real high on the Dolphins. Arian Foster, he's probably one tackle away from going back on the IR. So, give me the Lions as a wild card. No. Yeah. Not without it's Kelvin. Happen. Not without Kelvin. Matthew Stafford can't ever win the big game. So, we'll see. They got All right. Jim Bob Cooter. They do have him, and they have who's a Levy DeAndre Doesn't Levy from Jim Wisconsin. Bob Cooter. That's, That's all you need. Twenty-eight Wisconsin players in the NFL. That's pretty cool, including. Pretty good. Alex Erickson. Yeah. Good for him. We'll see if he's active. Yep. But, yeah, made the squad. Yep. Good for him. Uh, that'll about do it for this fantastic NFL preview. I'm yes, sure you haven't heard anything it's better. Anywhere way more than you get there. on ESPN, folks. Way more. <laughs> uh, send us your predictions, sports at gazetteextra.com, or find us on Twitter. Leave us a comment on YouTube or gazetteextra.com. Uh, let us know. Uh, maybe you can let us know early predictions for the Monterey Rock. Battle next yep, week. Next week, going to be a good one. Craig, we, gonna be a we'll good break one. that one down. As yep. a, uh, next week when we're back here, and we'll see uh, what happens with NFL Week One. Maybe we'll come back and just change all our predictions one week. We into might. It. Yes. Uh, thanks for checking in with us, and thanks to Dave Vaughn for producing the show, Kevin McLeod for the music, and uh, enjoy the first full weekend of every level of football being played. Yes. So it should be a good one. Go, Bucky. We'll see you next week. <laughs>